everyone this is you umrachu back again with a new video on a video series of csn at jia for science so finally i'm back with the new topic the most awaited topic that is climate change a myth or reality and by the end of this video i will explain this climate change and how to prevent it using mit simulator so be there with me till the end of this video and i will clear all your doubts in this session by the way we have crazy offer right now going on our website the list price ever and if you're really interested in csr then kindly have a look on this so let's see some recent events of climate change on our earth here we can see that there is a snowfall in algeria which is a part of sahara desert so snowfall is taking place in sahara desert guys here in canada temperature goes up to 49.6 degrees celsius where the winter temperature is somewhere minus 40 to minus 50 see that there is a jump of some 90 to 100 degrees celsius and it's a new national record here we can see that india commits to net zero emission by 2070 okay so all the developing countries sets their uh, the limit for net zero emissions this is time to reunite this is time to challenge this global climate change here we can see another example 13 of the 14 hottest year on record all occurred in the 21st century only so it's been some 20 years only and in 20 years we have 13 hottest years think of it if we see the past some proterozoic time 650 to 710 million years the temperature is minus 58 degree celsius and that time the entire earth is under ice even the equatorial region and what what is the reason behind it why melting took place and again there is a global cooling event so we'll see everything in detail in this video only okay so let's start with the basic concept of climate change what is a climate change means so here i have a example here we have earth and moon and you can see literally the distance between earth and sun is 150 million kilometer but the morning temperature on the moon is somewhere 212 fahrenheit in the night it is minus 338 fahrenheit while on the earth the range the diurnal range of temperature is not that much now what is the reason behind it if you see there is a atmosphere on the earth but not on the moon so here we can say that the atmosphere help us to create a specific temperature around the earth so basically the greenhouse gases which is there in the atmosphere absorb solar radiation Uh, outgoing infrared radiation to protect the earth okay to maintain this temperature so here in this way we can say that this greenhouse gases whether it is co2 methane water vapor it's important otherwise the global temperature reaches to minus 18 degree celsius without this atmosphere no the temperature will reach to minus 18 think of it it's very important then we can say right so uh, i already made a video on co2 okay biogeochemical cycle of co2 i will give you the link in the description kindly check this out after this video so here we can see that these are the sources of co2 so in one way co2 is important right because it is keeping the earth warm but the point here is 15 billion metric tons of fossil fuels consumed every year think of it every year so remember like 15 million sorry billion it's billion metric ton it will reach so much of co2 now this extra co2 affecting the earth so this extra co2 that is there in the atmosphere that leads to climate change and climate change is basically uh, change in the uh, in the weather in the in the long term weather okay it will it will create more number of floods the the summer will become more uh, warm the winters become more frigid uh, the the there is more uh, frequencies of cyclones droughts uh, then floods all these things these this is climate change forest fires so the frequency will increase okay now here we ha i have different uh, statements which supports climate change and statements support climate myth we'll see one by one in detail with proper explanation so let's begin with the very first myth in the past scientists told about global cooling yeah there are some papers somewhere in 70s and 80s uh, 80s which uh, simply focuses on the radiative forcing 
and various other parameters uh, by radiative forcing by aerosols, radiative forcing of the entire earth and all. And they find that, yeah, there is cooling takes place. But in those papers, they never consider the all parameters. If you say, uh, consider aerosols only. Aerosols has ability to reflect solar radiation. So if we uh, consider aerosols is surrounding the earth and these aerosols is reflecting the uh, solar radiation back to the space decreasing the uh, earth's uh, increasing the earth's albedo so that leads to the cooling right but at the same time if we consider uh, co2 if you consider h2o uh, then other greenhouse gases deforestation and all that leads to warming and at that point of time also you can literally see the most number of scientists is in the favor of warming and least in the favor of cooling. But what if someone is going through these papers only? So they made their mind that global cooling is going, going to happen, right? In few years or like that. So yeah, this is the thing. This is the reality. Uh, also, we here we can see that, uh, uh, see that uh, the, there is a sea height variation. Now sea height variation is all because of global warming. So each year, the sea height is increasing with the rate of some 3 millimeters per year. This is the rate. And again, this rate is not fixed. After some 20 to 30 years, if we, uh, if we don't control this uh, global warming, the rate will increase. It becomes 6 millimeters, it becomes 10 millimeters. Nobody knows. So rate is increasing with the year, right? So this sea height variation is simply showing that, yes, global warming is happening. And that's the truth. And let me tell you guys, uh, the, the sea level rise is not mainly because of the global melting of ice sheets in Antarctica and uh, in uh, Greenland. It's more, more due to thermal expansion of seawater. And this thermal expansion of seawater leads to sea height variation. This is the major uh, reason behind sea level rise. And that's the reason why most of the countries like recently Indonesia uh, shifted its uh, capital from Jakarta to new place. What is the reason? The reason is um, in some some 20 to 30 years, Jakarta will submerge because of the sea level rise. And in India also, we have very uh, huge coastline. So those areas are getting affected by sea level rise. Okay. Here also in the Antarctica, we can see there is a melting of ice mass. In Greenland, there is a melting of ice mass. And let me tell you guys, if the entire ice sheets of Antarctica and Greenland will melt, it will lead to rise of sea level by some 66 meters. Okay, remember in the northern hemisphere, it's not Arctic ice, it's a Greenland because Arctic ice is a sea ice. It's already a part of ocean. So if even if it will melt, it will never change the sea level. Okay, but this Greenland and Antarctica is on the continent, uh, is on the land. So if it will melt, it will rise the sea level. Okay. Okay. Now some scientists also argue that uh, Arctic sea ice is increasing 40% in, in the recent years. Here we can see that there is an increase. But if you see the overall trend of the curve is almost decreasing. So uh, on NASA website also, you can literally see the animation how Arctic sea ice is changing over a year and it's uh, almost decreasing. Yeah, sometimes we have some certain rise up and down, but that is mm, because of solar cycles and all. It's not uh, affected by uh, man-made activities, okay. Uh, okay, now we also know that, this is the third myth, by the way. We also know that sun is getting brighter and brighter. So some 4.6 billion year ago, our earth is formed. And from that time till now, the brightness of sun is increasing, okay. It is increasing with time. So is it responsible for global warming? Because all we need energy is from sun, right? So uh, this is the main culprit then? No, again, it's wrong. Here we can see that there are two curves. The red one is showing temperature and the blue one is showing solar activity. Over a uh, period from 1880 to uh, 2000, we can see there is a peak over here. And after that, there is a decreasing curve. So after 1960, the temperature is decreasing. But what about the temperature? It is increasing. So here both are contradicting each other, right? So even if sun is getting brighter, the temperature of the earth is getting more and more, right? Okay, now another myth. Human emits tiny fraction of CO2 in the atmosphere. So why it is so much important then? 
see our humans uh, emit only 30 gigatons while the the atmospheric process the oceanic processes it releases 780 gigatons of co2 so the main culprit should be our earth right it's not humans no it's not like that each year uh, this much of uh, carbon dioxide 780 gigatons of carbon dioxide is released by the ocean but the same amount is also consumed by the oceans and different biogeochemical processes so same amount is because since carbon dioxide is having a cycle no it's it is having a biogeochemical cycle so it is passing through different uh, regions of uh, say earth it is passing through you know, biological processes it is passing through some physical processes in this way Uh, there is always a net zero carbon dioxide but since uh, after the after humans after uh, industrial revolution uh, you can see we are adding 30 gigatons this much and it is continuously increasing it's not a fixed value it is increasing with the time so this much of addition will affect the net zero co2 initially it is net zero but now we are we are simply adding this 30 gigaton no so in this way we are affecting the global uh, temperature in this plot we can literally see that right now the concentration is 400 close to 400 ppm and this value see somewhere here we have industrial age okay so just after industrial age there is a peak in co2 that additional co2 is generated by humans but in geological past up to 800000 years we come to know that uh, there is a change there is a shift in co2 plots so sometimes we have high concentration of co2 sometimes it is showing a low concentration but after this there is a increase in trend and how we come to know that it's a uh, it's a showing this much of variability in some 800000 years so basically it's from ice core since i am working in the same field we have the oldest ice core which is of the same is 800000 years okay it is ice core okay so how these gases are trapped in the ice this is the first question whenever snow falls it is having some air with it okay now this snow is getting compressed by its own weight and then it turns to fern and then finally it turns into a glacial ice if we further compress that glacial ice say some 600 meter 700 meter depth ice has now gases but that gas is not in the gaseous phase that turns into clathrates okay so basically we use that gases which is trapped in the ice cores to understand the uh, paleo atmospheric chemistry to understand the paleo gaseous concentration of atmosphere so uh, what we do uh, we i will show you one animation through which you will come to know so our very first task is to uh, simply do not contaminate the interior gases with ambient atmosphere because if we melt say if we melt any ice core in normal atmosphere what ha happen the interior gases will simply contaminated with the exterior gas right so for that we have some this kind of setup so what we do is firstly we put a uh, ice core uh, chunk of ice core into uh, this kind of flask now this sample is surrounded by ambient atmosphere because this this flask is having some amb ambient atmosphere now some gases are there nitrogen oxygen uh, whose con whose proportion is 78 is to 21 like that okay current pur proportion is there in this flask so what we do is we use some vacuum uh, pipes to remove all the ambient atmosphere first now this is still frozen so the ears are still trapped inside it right so in this way you can literally see the gases is moving this way it is removed out it is removed out then what we do is we melt the sample when we melt the sample what happen it will release all the trapped gases which is there in the sample to the flask okay now we freeze this water again so we freeze this water again now after uh, getting frozen this gas is still there because the temperature is not that much to uh, fro uh, to to contains this gases it needs it needs more uh, uh, negative temperature to condense okay now these gases is then taken out through another pipe another vacuum chamber and then it moves to this particular helium cylinder so this helium cylinder is at some uh, 
फोर डिग्री कैलविन ओके इट्स वेरी कोल्ड टेम्परेचर सो ओवर देयर इट अगेन गेट फ्रोजन ओके वंस इट गेट फ्रोजन वी पुट दिस सैंपल इन टू मास स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर ओके मास स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर मास स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर इज बेसिकली यूज टू अंडरस्टैंड वेरियस आइसोटोप्स कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ओके हियर वी यूज एम सी आई सी पी एम एस ओके सो वट वी डू वी देन फ्रीज दैट गैस एंड देन अगेन मेल्ट इट ओके फ्रीज दैट गैस मेल्ट इट एंड पुट इट इन टू दिस मास स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर सो हियर वी इंट्रोड्यूस दैट गैस विच बिकम्स वॉर्म विच गेट आयोनाइज बिकॉज ऑफ टेम्परेचर इन बिल्ड टेम्परेचर नाउ से in that gas we have two different isotopes of same gases say nitrogen we have two uh, separate isotopes of nitrogen now we know that isotopes have different atomic mass so the one which is having a high atomic mass will less deflected right which is lighter say we have two isotopes uh, one is having uh, 14 mass and one is having 15 mass so 15 mass is having more inertia no it is having more mass so more inertia so it won't deflect easy easily right so the one which deflects easily will hit this one this sensor and the one which deflects very uh, less which is heavy will simply hits this sensor in this way we know the concentration of different gases okay of same uh, different isotopes of same gases are you getting my point so here we have say nitrogen 15 and 14 so in this case uh, in this case a uh, 15 is heavier so it won't deflect much so it will directly hit this sensor and in this way we know the concentration of n15 while if uh, uh, we have 14 it will it uh, since it is a uh, lighter one so it get deflected which is uh, recognized by this sensor and in this way we come to know about the concentration of different isotopes okay now once we know the different isotopes say nitrogen oxygen uh, then we use these proxies to uh, to reconstruct the paleo uh, temperature paleo climate paleo oceanography like that so say in uh, in the case of nitrogen 15 to the 14 it will help you to understand the global temperature oxygen 18 to the 16 ratio will help you to understand the ocean temperature so like this we use different proxies so here uh, we can see that how global temperature uh, sorry global co2 changes over geological past okay now let me tell you here we have concentrations of co2 uh, in the uh, in the bottom we can see 1979 to 1985 right now here is one separate plot uh, here we have plots according to latitude so this is 90 degree south this is 30 degree south equator 30 degree north and 90 degree north and with time we'll see how it is changing so uh, initially uh, right now we are having these plots are uh, because of uh, this uh, satellite readings and uh, in situ uh, instruments which is placed on mount aloa okay so uh, daily uh, you can see uh, how it is varying co2 and you can literally see there is a peak up up and down peak the carbon dioxide dish, uh, carbon dioxide is sometimes decreasing sometimes increasing but overall the curve is increasing okay with time it is increasing right see and let me tell you here we have maximum changes in 30 degree north and 90 degree north region while somewhere close to antarctica the change is not that much here we have maximum changes because most of the developed countries are there there we have arctic and our whole uh, industrial revolution took place somewhere close to this region right this european region 30 degree north and sorry uh, 90 degree north region right so jan 2021 you can see the value of carbon dioxide is 415 ppm okay now from killing data from 1958 to 1975 if you exaggerate this particular curve we can see this trend and this uh, trend is from uh, la dome high school you can see we we are going back in the time and from epica high score we can reconstruct the temperature some 800000 years back so epica high score dome you can literally see it is going back in time and how it is varying you can now see
800,000 years ago. So here we can see the different stages in Ice Age 185, Pre-Industrial 278 ppm, Jan 1979 uh, uh, from global view CO2 data we can see it is 336 and the currently uh, it is 415 ppm. Okay, so this is killing curve and here we can see that uh, sometimes it is more, sometimes it is less. So it's a annual variation in one year. Uh, there is a maximum CO2 sometimes in atmosphere and sometimes minimum. It's all because of uh, seasons. So uh, the maximum concentration shows springtime and uh, the minimum concentration in one year shows fall time. So fall time we have less plants, less uh, leaves, less leaves means because it is already falling down. No, So photosynthesis will be less, less photosynthesis means more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So that's why we have annual variation. That's why we have up and down each year. And uh, here we can see that the value comparison between 2020 and 2021, there is some two PPM rise. So you can say that the current rate of rise of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is two PPM. Okay, so we have another myth. How we know it's a human induced CO2 because there are uh, tons of things in the global atmosphere in the on the earth which release CO2 which I already explained in biogeochemical cycles like volcanoes it releases CO2 like uh, organisms they, they release CO2 through respiration so how we say that it's a human induced CO2 how we say that it's generated by industries uh, burning of fossil fuels and all so there are two isotopes of carbon in the atmosphere one is 12 one is 13 now 12 is the one which is used by plants during photosynthesis okay so uh, during photosynthesis all the plants use c12 and if those plants are uh, turning into say coals which we use as a fossil fuel we, if we burn those coals it will again release c12 into the atmosphere same carbon 12 will release okay so over a period of time, we literally see that the percentage of uh, carbon di carbon 12 is increasing while carbon 13 is decreasing. I'm talking about proportion. So what if, if we add more and more carbon 12 into the atmosphere, the proportion of 13 will decrease? No, because we are burning fossil fuels and those fossil fuels is having carbon 12. Okay, so that will decrease the concentration proportionally, right? The proportion will decrease for carbon 13. So here in this way, we can say that the, the, the concentration of carbon 12 is increasing and that is human induced CO2. Okay. Okay. We have another myth. Volcanoes emit more CO2 than humans. That's a wrong statement. Here we literally see that uh, the, the average Per year, emission of vol uh, volcanic CO2 and human CO2 is having a huge gap. They grow on a human. This much of CO2 is generated by humans and this much is volcanic. So that's a huge gap. And while volcanoes emit CO2, I already told you, when limestone uh, undergoes subduction and all, so that limestone is made up of CO, CO3 and on heating it breaks into CO plus CO2, that CO2 released through the atmosphere. Then there is another myth, what about the water? It is also a greenhouse gas, right? See, water has three phases, solid, liquid and gas. In solid and liquid phase, it's not a greenhouse gas. But in a vapor phase, it acts as a greenhouse gas. And that is not human generated. It's all natural, right? But again, I will tell you, this is completely wrong. The amount of vapor in the atmosphere is again anthropogenic. Why? Because we are the one who increasing the who is increasing the global temperature and if there is more temperature if if the atmosphere is more warmer it can hold more water vapor so more and more concentration of water vapor is all because of warming of global atmosphere okay are you getting my point we are in increasing the temperature and that increasing temperature leads to more evaporation that leads to more holding of water vapor into the atmosphere so it's it's a feedback thing okay positive feedback we are increasing temperature and that leads to increasing water vapor and that leads to more absorption of infrared radiation that leads to more melting and that more melting leads to again 
the lower the albedo and increase in the temperature again so the whole chain will goes on and on to increase the global warming okay another myth earth has warmed and cooled in the past so i already made a video on this the effect of milanovic cycle on the climate change that i already uh, explained on my youtube channel i will give you the link in the description have a look on that also uh, in uh, by the way i will give you the summary so basically because of this milanovic cycle the earth's orbit and tilt varies with time okay it varies with time so that change that shift in the orbit and tilt will affect the net radiation reaching to the earth surface okay so this eccentricity is having a period a cycle of 1 lakh year this is having a cycle of uh, some uh, 41000 23000 like that so the, these are the cycles which occurs at different intervals okay now because of this cycles the net intensity reaching the earth surface will affect and if we affect the net uh, net solar radiation reaching the earth surface our earth will heat differently in different period if it is close then it will heat more if it is far from the sun it will heat less so in this way we can say that the net change in the radiation affects global heating and cooling but right now what is happening what is happening we are adding more and more co2 and that leads to change in the global temperature it's not only the uh, milanovic cycle okay so we have now something other to increase the radiation to increase the warming okay so from this milanovic cycle if we see the plots uh, there is a temperature plot over here and co2 plot over here but one thing you can note that this co2 lags behind the temperature that means first temperature is rising then co2 is rising okay if temperature is is a effect of co2 that means temperature should lag behind the co2 but here things are opposite yahan dekho temperature pehle badha hai then co2 is increasing so that means increase in temperature leads to increase in co2 are you getting my point so why it is showing so why it is happening here also you can see the temperature is increasing first then co2 why it's all because of this milanovic cycle only so the net change in total radiation will increase temperature first if the temperature will increase then it will increase melting that leads to more release of co2 which is there in permafrost which uh, which uh, uh, is there in trapped ice and that in that in that way the temperature of global climate is increasing okay so but but these kind of processes in there in geological past it's not a current scenario it's not a pre uh, post industrial uh, revolution thing oh it's before industrial revolution okay this particular thing okay here also we can see that uh, because of this industries only uh, the co2 is affected more like uh, in 2019 somewhere here in the in this week we can see the concentration of co2 is this much but after that we all know because of this corona virus lockdown is going on and the co2 emission weekly global co2 emission will decrease because of this corona virus most of the industries uh, like businesses and the whole uh, most of the places have lockdown and all so yeah that leads to less production of co2 no so here we can see there's a proof that we are the one who is generating co2 so now the question is who is cul culprit okay so we can uh, like uh, see that from this plot the upper middle income companies the developed uh, countries and also the developed countries had developed companies <laughs> okay so their population is not that much but still the co2 emission is very high like america china no doubt india is on the third number but still we are developing and that's why we set the net zero emission to 2070 because we have to develop first and then we'll then we will more think about uh, the co2 but in reality we are making policies from now itself we are focusing on uh, more renewable source of energy from now itself okay because it's not a one day process we have to work 
for a long period of time then only we can control this climate change okay so here we can see that uh, this population is having 40 uh, 46 percent lower middle income com co countries has only 14 percent of emissions and if you see the largest producers of fossil fuels co2 emission worldwide india is on the third rank but again we can see the percentage for china it is 27 for india it's 6.82 so as I promised you that uh, by the end of this lecture, I will explain the whole climate change scenario with MIT simulator. So this is the interface of MIT simulator. And here we can see that by the end of this 21st century, the temperature will rise up to 3.6 degrees Celsius. Now you can say that uh, it's just a 3.6 degrees Celsius. It won't make much difference to us. Okay. But let me tell you guys like uh, normally our body temperature is how much? 97.5 degree Fahrenheit. Now add 3.6 degree Fahrenheit to that, okay, or say in the Celsius, our body temperature is 36 degrees Celsius. If we add 3.6 degrees Celsius more to our body, we then have a very strong fever. We have viral then. Our body temperature will rise that much. So 97.5 plus 3.6, it becomes 101 something, 0.5, right? <laughs> that is a fever situation. Right. In the same way, if we add this much of temperatures to the Earth's global temperature, that leads to the catastrophic events on the Earth's surface. The whole uh, climate will change then. Okay. So in this interface, we can see literally how we can change the energy supply, transport and land and industry emission to decrease the temperature. Say here we have population. If we decrease the population, you will see there is a shift in the blue line so there is a change right here you can see there is a change and if we increase the population the carbon footprints will increase then and that leads to increase of temperature and again here we are considering if you click over here here we are expecting that by the end of 2100 uh, 21st century uh, the total population will be 10.9 billion so what if we, if we do say some uh, we, if we make some policies of one child uh, one, one child then the the number of total population will be 9.1 billion only and in that case you can see the temperature is falling down so basically we are affecting the carbon footprints on the atmosphere if we decrease the economic growth because development is directly proportional to pollution is directly proportional to global warming developed countries has more there is nothing like sustainable development it's uh, just a bullshit okay electrification see instead of using fossil fuels cars we if you use the electrical cars if we do electrification everywhere and electrification means it's it should be renewable electricity it, it is not like thermal electricity okay if we increase the energy efficiency see what if we decrease the coal like how we decrease the coal use of coal by putting heavy tax by putting heavy tax you can literally see let me make it zero or say right now the coal price is 20 rupees per kg if we make it uh, like 200 rupees per kg then nobody will buy everyone then shifts to renewable energy solar cells and all in that case you can literally see if we put a heavy tax on that the temperature will fall down and same way if we see put in on the oil so see it's all because of this thing here government should take some steps government should make some policies like uh, to decrease the subsidy on fossil fuels uh, currently we are having subsidies on different fossil fuels kerosene pay we have uh, uh, subsidy we have subsidy on uh, this diesel lpg if we decrease the subsidy instead of that we will increase the tax that will help us and see the problem with us is right now we are going through this lecture and we are feeling that government ko aisa karna chahiye right but jab bhi petrol ki price badhti hai what we do what we do in reality right now prices is going on right rise kar 
बढ़ता है तो क्या होता है वी ऑल नो सो दिस क्लाइमेट चेंज इज देयर इन आवर सिलेबस बट वी नेवर इम्प्लीमेंट इन आवर डेली लाइफ वी ऑलवेज प्रीफर टू टेक बाइक एंड बस बाइक एंड कार्स इंस्टीड ऑफ इंस्टीड ऑफ साइकल्स राइट वी प्रीफर दैट इफ वी चेंज आवर डेली रिक्वायरमेंट्स डेली सम इफ वी डेवलप सम माइक्रो हैबिट्स नो वी कैन कंट्रोल क्लाइमेट चेंज ओके सो या सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट क्लाइमेट चेंज होप यू लाइक द वीडियो and it really takes lots of effort so please do like share subscribe and comment okay please so that's it everybody hope you like the video chalo bye